Greetings, Rhema of All Family Church. Great to connect with you this morning. Thank you so much for streaming in and watching our online service today. And uh, such a wonderful privilege to be able just to speak to you today, God's Word. And in that time, I believe that you are strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And so today we give Jesus all the glory, all the strength, because he is the strength of our lives today. And so we're going to pray and uh, then we'll enter into a time of worshiping. Father, we just thank you today that we come into your throne room of grace today to obtain mercy and find your grace today to help in the time of need. We thank you that as we come, we come to lift up the name of Jesus above all else today the name that is above every name. And we give you the glory, all the praise and honor in Jesus' name. Well, let's take this time right now just to enter into his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise and be thankful to him and declare that this is the day the Lord has made. Let's worship the Lord together. You'll see all the words will come up on your screen and have a wonderful time. Just enter in with all your heart this morning as you praise him. Amen. Love is an ocean, you can drown me. The sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste the sea. I'm under grace, the place to be. It means I'll never need an umbrella. I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather. Whether or never I ever understand I'm a man in the hands of great plans. I stand with faith and a life I never known to touch. And still I stop my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's to die for? Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's to die for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living. Living yeah. now
Praise the Lord. Isn't it wonderful just to worship and give God praise today? We want to come and honor God with our substance today to show forth our love for His kingdom today by honoring Him and giving to Him. Uh, in Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 and 25, it says, There is he that scattereth and yet increases, and there is that withholdeth more than is meet, but intendeth to poverty. A liberal soul shall be made fat. He that watereth will be watered himself. And, and so today it's talking about the fact of giving, trusting God. You know, when it speaks here and it talks about he that scatters, one that keeps on giving. And it says that when you do that, it will come back to you. And there is he that holdeth and what he withholds tends to poverty. You know, and I know that in a time like this, I don't think there's anybody that has been uncertain about finances and what is happening in the financial realm in the country, even in the whole world. But you know, one thing you should not do is not withhold more than you should withhold. And I believe that, you know, one of the things that we tend to do many times is to withhold our giving to God. And, uh, you know, one thing we shouldn't do is I would rather withhold uh, in giving some other things in other areas, but not withhold from giving from God. Because, you know, there's a saying that goes, you don't kill the hen that lays the golden egg. That means you never ever cut off the source of where your blessing comes from. And so never ever cut off your giving, never cut off your giving to God, because you know, that is where our source is. God is our source. Whatever's happening around us, God will care for us. It says, seek first the kingdom of God. And when you seek his kingdom first, all other things that we need will be added unto us. So right now, let's take our, our determined in our hearts, our offering. You'll see that if you want to sow a seed into the ministry and help us in the ministry by sowing your seed, you'll see all our banking details uh, coming up on the screen. And let me pray right now and just say thank you, Lord, for our substance today. Thank you for our giving hearts today. Thank you that we are liberal in our giving today. And we give praise to you today because we know, Lord, that you, our God, will take care of all our needs according to the riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As we share God's word today, you know, God's word is so important to you and I today. Uh, you know, I was just thinking, you know, the word is like a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The word teaches us how we should live. And, you know, if we apply the word into our lives and we do what the word wants us to do, you know what? We're going to come out of everything in life on the right side. And so today, I want to share the Word of God with you today. Uh, and before I do that, I want to ask you a question today. What, do you, what is it that is most valuable to you in your life today? You know, I think that many times we have value possessions and certain things in our life. I think that maybe our value system has changed a little bit because uh, before maybe you were more concerned about a nice car or a nice this or that. But right now, we find that the things that we thought were valuable are not so valuable right now and that uh, our families are valuable and, and, and the taking care of our families are very valuable to us. So, so what is the most valuable thing to you today? I believe the most valuable thing that you and I have today and the thing that we possess that is the most valuable thing is our hearts. You know, our hearts are so important today. Uh, in Proverbs, which is known as the book of wisdom, you know, Solomon was teaching and he, and he says this in the beginning of the Proverbs. He says, these Proverbs are written so I can teach wise men how to live their lives right. And in Proverbs, there's a chapter 6, verses 23, 
It says this in the Proverbs as we read it together. Excuse me, the, the reference there is actually Proverbs 4, 23. It says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And so, yeah, the word is teaching us that you and I need to guard our heart. That means that you you got to put things around your heart. You know, the word guard there means like a garrison. Like, you know, if you go into security places, they have guards that check you out and find out your details before they, they give you access into a particular place. And that's what it's talking about, guarding your heart, just not allowing anything in life to come into your heart. You have to guard your heart because your heart is so important today. You know, there's a story. Let me give you this analogy uh, about a boat. You know, the, yeah, a boat is designed to be in water. And, you know, but one thing about this, a boat will never ever sink while it is in water. But a boat will sink if water gets into it. And that analogy speaks about this. You and I are in this world, but we should never allow the world into us. In other words, you know, the scripture tells us, although we're in this world, we are not of this world. And so we need to protect our hearts and guard our hearts and not allow things in the world to come into our hearts. You know, there's a lot of unrighteous stuff out there. There's a whole lot of stuff out in the world that you just got to be careful not allowing it to get into you. Because if you allow it to get into you, it can cause your heart to go in the wrong direction in life. And so you have to guard it. So this morning, I believe, why is our heart so important? Why is our heart so important? I believe the number one reason why our hearts are so important today is because it's out of our hearts that we worship God. We worship God out of our hearts. It's so important for us to understand our hearts out of a right heart to worship God. And this morning, I want to share a story with you from the Bible, which is an amazing story that actually changes the whole concept of worship and how we perceived worship. You know, the story uh, you might know it comes out of John chapter 4 about Jesus at the well in Samaria and the Samaritan woman. This story talks about the fact that Jesus journeyed through Samaria. The Bible says that he must need go through Samaria and he came to Jacob's well. As he was sitting there in Jacob's well wanting to have something to drink, not having any means to get water out of the well, a Samaritan woman came and uh, he said to the Samaritan woman, woman, Give me some water to drink. And she said, you know, why do you, a Jew, want me, a Samaritan woman, to give you something to drink? We have nothing to do with each other. And Jesus said then to her, you know, if you knew who asked you to give you to drink, you would ask him to give you the water that, that you will drink or that you'll never thirst again. And, you know, she asked him and said, give me that water to drink. And Jesus does something that makes her realize that he's not just another man. He then says to her, go call your husband and tell him to come. And the woman said, I have no husband. And Jesus turns around and said to her, you have well said you have no husband for you have had all five husbands. And the one that you have now is not your husband. And all of a sudden, the Samaritan woman knew that this was a prophet because how would he know this? And this was supernaturally revealed to her. And so she, she, she said there, I perceive that you are a prophet. And then it goes on and it says this. This is what I want to read to you that gives us such an important view of why our hearts are so important to God. In John 4, 20 to 24, out of the Passion Bible, it says, the woman says to him, so tell me this. Why do your fathers worship God here on this nearby mountain? But your people teach that Jerusalem is the place where we must worship. Which is right? She asked, which is the right? Jesus read responds to and says, Believe me, dear woman, the time has come when you wouldn't worship the Father on this mountain, nor in Jerusalem, but in your heart. Your people don't really know the one they worship. We Jews worship out of our experience, for it is from the Jews that salvation has been made available. From here on, all 
from now on, worshipping the Father will not be a matter of the right place, but with the right heart. God is a spirit and he longs to and have a sincere worshippers worship him and adore him in the realm of spirit and truth. What an amazing verse of scripture yeah, that Jesus is talking about to, uh, to this woman. And, and, you know, we need to look at this so carefully this morning uh, as this goes along. Right up until that moment where it says the woman said, well, wh what's the right place to worship? Because at that time, people used to worship in different places. And they, the place was the place that determined your worship to God. Uh, we know that people used to go to Jerusalem to the temple to worship. The Samaritans went into the mountains to worship. But Jesus says this. He said, Jesus said this. Notice in verses 20, Jesus said this. He says, oh, so tell me this. Why do your fathers worship God here on the nearby mountain? But your people teach that in Jerusalem there's a place where we need to worship, which is right. Which is right. So Jesus responds to that. In verses 23 and 24, and he says, from now on, worship in the Father will not be a matter of the right place, but with the right heart, with the right heart. So worship today comes out of our heart. It's not what place I'm in. You see, it's not where I come from, what country I'm from, what city I'm from. It's not from my status in life that my worship comes from. My heart is the place where my worship comes from. It goes on and it says that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It goes on and says it's the, the, the right place, but the right heart. Notice in verses 23 and 24, from now on, worshiping the father will not be a matter of the right place, but with the right heart. We worship God out of a right heart. You know, the heart is so important that you don't just give your heart to anything or anybody. You know, you can't just give your heart to things around you. You know, there's so many people in this world today that are walking around broken hearted, broken hearted because of the things that have happened, the disappointments, the things that have happened to them. People have done things to them. And so they become very broken hearted and disappointment. And you know, if you have a broken heart and you're disappointed, I want you to know it actually hinders you of worshiping God in the right way. That's why I've seen this as a pastor over many years, that the place where God touches people's hearts the most is in worship. How many times haven't you, myself or yourself or somebody else you've seen just in a worship service and all of a sudden tears would come to their eyes. And the reason why that happens is because God in worship deals with our hearts. And so, you know, if you're broken hearted, you know, you've heard people say this, you know, I gave my heart to her and she broke my heart or I gave my heart to him and he broke my heart. And uh, we're living lives with broken hearts and we need to understand that we need to beware of what we allow into our heart. You've got to guard your heart. Proverbs 25 verses 28. A man who cannot rule his own spirit or heart is like a city whose walls are broken down. That story tells us about, and it refers to the time where the walls of Jerusalem were broken down and Nehemiah had it in his heart to build the walls of Jerusalem. And he, he talks about a, a person that doesn't have rule. If you don't have control over your heart, then it's like a city that's got no walls. And what happens is in Jerusalem, when it had no walls, the enemy would come in and go out just as it wanted it to. You know, that's why your heart has got to be protected. You have to protect your heart in life. It's so important for you to do that today. You know that God wants your heart and I want you to know the devil wants to steal your heart. So there's two things. Yeah, that you'll see that God wants God. God wants your heart. The next thing you see is the devil wants to steal your heart because your heart is so important today. And it's very important that we do that. So uh, let's have a look at some things in the word that talks about the heart, how we would liken unto our heart, how we let things into our heart. You know, the word tells us that our hearts are like soil. 
They are like soil. We plant things and we put things into our heart. In Mark, Jesus was teaching in chapter 4, verses 15, and he taught this story, and it says, These are they by the wayside, where the word is sown, and when they have heard it, Satan comes immediately and takes the word that was sown in their heart. You see, sown in the heart. So things are sown into our heart. In other words, we could put it this way. Our hearts are like receivers. Whatever we put into it will come out of it. Whatever you put, it's like a computer. You know, you can't get any information out of a computer if you haven't put it into the computer. But if it's in there, it will come out. You can withdraw that information. So that's a heart because that's what will happen in your life. What you sow in your heart is what will become part of your heart. Proverbs chapter 23 verses 7 tells us, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So things will come into your heart. You see, everything, we actually live our lives from out of our hearts today. And so the heart is so important. What we put into our hearts is so important for us. There are four kinds of hearts, you know, that Jesus spoke about in Mark chapter 4. And I think these four kinds of heart are so important for you and I as believers to be aware of that Jesus talks about. In Mark chapter 4, and we have a look at these hearts that it speaks about. In Mark chapter 4 verses 16, it speaks about the first kind of heart that we can look at. It says this in Mark 4 16, these are they by the wayside which are sown on stony ground. That there speaks about a stony heart, a hard heart, and a hard heart, you know, a stony heart is a hard heart. People that have hard hearts, people that, you know, because of the, what they've experienced in their life, the, maybe the way they were brought up, and they are they're so hard-hearted towards God, uh, they even hard-hearted to other people. I mean, I think that some of, we probably have all met some people that are hard-hearted people. And uh, we need to understand that we need to be aware of hard-heartedness. We need to very, be very careful about having a hard heart. Because God doesn't want us to be hard-hearted people. He wants to put a new heart in you. He wants to take out a stony heart. He wants to take out a, a hard heart. It tells us this in Ezekiel. It tells us in the, uh, chapter 11 verses 19 where Ezekiel prophesied and said, God said, I will give them one heart, a new heart, and I will put a new spirit within them, and I will take away the stony, unnaturally hardened heart out of their flesh, and I will give them a heart of flesh, sensitive, responsive to the touch of their God. You know, if you just allow God to come into your heart, you know, he will change your heart. God changes people's hearts. I like what it says in Samuel. Uh, it says this in God doesn't look on the outward appearances. God looks into the heart. You know, people look on the outward, but God looks into the heart. And God is in the heart changing business. He changes our hearts. I thank God the day that Jesus came into my life and how he changed my heart because I was kind of a messed up person as well. And I had all kinds of uh, stuff in my heart. And I thank God when he came into my heart that he gave me that heart sensitive and responsive to him and so have a heart today responsive to god don't allow your heart to be hardened in life it goes on and jesus teaches more and he tells us in mark chapter 4 17 he talks about the fact that another kind of heart that he speaks about yeah is a, a thorny heart or a, an offensive heart we want to talk about an offensive heart in mark 417 it says uh, these are they which have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time and afterwards when affliction persecution ariseth for the word's sake immediately they are offended immediately they are offended and so this talks about offended hearts people that have offended hearts uh, have you ever met people and i suppose you have so easily offended you know, you're actually scared to talk to some people because they just get offended at any little thing that goes on. And it's because they've allowed their hearts to be open to offense. 
If they don't like this and they don't like that, uh, get so offended about things that are around them. Actually, they get offended about things that are so insignificant sometimes in life that are actually meaningless. They'll get offended at those things. And so we mustn't allow our hearts to get offended at things. I believe that that is one of the ways that the devil really gets people out from the church and out of being connected to God is through offense. He's a champion of getting people's feelings, hearts offended about certain things. There are so many people today that are not in church because they have been offended at something that's happened around them or to them. Jesus said offenses must come. That's what Jesus was saying that, you know, in this life, there will always be things there to offend you. Man, you can go out of your house to the shop and you can get offended at the tiller at the shop. You can get offended in the, in the car park by somebody that might have taken a parking in front of you. You can get offended at, at anything. You just got to understand that you should not allow offenses to come into your heart. You just got to hold on to the word of God instead of holding on to offenses and things that come your way in life. I love what... Uh, it says in uh, Psalms 119, verse 165, it says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Great peace are those that love their law, and nothing shall, shall offend them. That means I, I'm not going to allow my heart. I love the word of God. I want to hold on to the word of God because I don't want an offense to, to stop the word working in my life. I'll rather let the offense go. Just let it go, drop it, and just hold on to God's word. And that's what the psalmist is saying here. I love God's word too much. That's why I will not allow things to offend me. Jesus goes on and teaches about another kind of heart, which is the thorny heart. And he talks about the thorny heart. And in verses 18 and 19 says, And these are they which are sown among thorns. That means thorny hearts such as hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things enter in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Thorny heart is a heart that gets distracted and gets deceived by other things. You know, Jesus spoke about the parable of the wheat and the tares, that Jesus, the wheat is the fruit that grows up and the tares are there that come to try and choke it. And you know, thorny heart is this is when we allow ourselves to get distracted by the things of this world, deceitfulness of riches, you know, the lust or the desire for other things come in. And it talks about it chokes the word. And that's, that's the condition of a, a stony heart. A stony heart is a heart that things have infiltrated a heart, your heart. When you allow the world and the desires for other things to come into your life and to steal your heart and take your heart away from God, I want you to know it starts to choke the word in your life. And then the, the, the word becomes unfruitful. That's why you, you need to be careful about what you allowed yourself to be distracted in. And you know, I, I've seen this many times. People get distracted by things and what happens is they start putting those things before God. And you can, we can use all the excuses we want in life. You, you hear people many times saying, well, you know, I don't have any time anymore to come to church or I don't have time to do this. I'm too busy with that. So what the real problem is, ma'am, and sir, is this, is you've allowed the distractions of this world to come and to choke your walk, to choke that word in your life. And so you need to be aware of that today because God never, ever called you to be busy. Nowhere in the Bible does it God say, be busy, 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 busy. No, in the Bible, the Bible says, be fruitful, not busy, busy, busy. We're not, so we need to be careful. We don't become overly busy with the things of this world because they become thorns and they enter our heart and they distract us from what God has in our life. Then we go on to the next condition, heart. And I believe all of us have this kind of heart and that's called the good heart. Look at somebody next to you and say, you have a good heart. Hallelujah. Mark 4 verses 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. Some 30, some 60, some a hundredfold. 
These are good ground, good ground people that hear the word, they receive the word, they guard their hearts, they protect the word in their lives. And as they give themselves to the word, what happens is they start bringing forth fruit in their life. Maybe the fruit starts off small, 20 fold, 30 fold, 60 fold, but it grows and it increases and it keeps on growing. You know, the Bible tells us that God is glorified when you and I produce much fruit. Jared says in John 15 verses 8, Yarin is my father glorified that you bear much fruit, so you'll be my disciples. God is glorified when you and I bring forth fruit. So protect your heart. You know, a good heart doesn't mean you're a perfect person. A good heart is a heart of a person that pursues to walk with an upright heart. You know, if you think about David, you know, David had so many things going on in his life. And David wasn't perfect, far from perfect. But you know what? David kept on pursuing God with his heart. His heart was always towards God, even in the failures, in the things that went wrong. And he actually had this testimony, and you can read it if you want to just check in, in your Bible in, in Acts chapter 15 or 13, sorry, verses 22, that it says that David had this testimony that he had a heart before God. His heart was towards God. And David prayed things like this in his life. It says, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. And that, what is it saying is, you know, even though we're in this world, we make mistakes. Lord, help me to serve you with my heart. Renew a right spirit, right attitudes, right motives in my life. Creating me a clean heart. Not a perfect heart, but a clean heart is an upright heart. You know, an upright heart is a heart that wants to do the right things. And God knows in life that you and I, we have struggles in our lives. We have things that we have to deal with in our lives. But all you need to do is keep on pursuing God, wanting to do the right thing. You see, a, a good heart, an upright heart is a heart that is sincere and wanting to do the right thing, doing the things that God wants us to do. And so today, I really want to encourage you today to protect your heart right now. Be careful what you listen to, what you're watching and what you're hearing people say. Be careful of opinions that people have. Because those opinions, they can give their opinions, but many times opinions don't really mean anything. Give yourself to God, his word and attention, especially right now. Uh, I just want to encourage you. I just feel as the pastor of our church, Rhema Vol, to say to you, keep staying connected with God. Don't allow yourself to be distracted in the moments we're in. Don't allow yourself to get too comfortable in some areas where you become complacent and not give yourself to God. Allow yourself to keep your channel of God's word coming into your life. Keep connected with God through prayer and the word. Even say this to you. I know that many times, you know, especially now, you know, maybe having to listen to our streaming online service that it probably costs a lot of people a lot of data and stuff like that. And so, you know, there's uh, people that don't have the data maybe to do our online service and watch it. But, you know, you've got to ask yourself, what are you spending your data on? You know, and if I'm spending my data on stuff that is just uh, texting or this friend or that friend, insignificant stuff, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, no, I'm not going to allow data time and, and let that data time steal me from hearing what God's word is saying to me, especially on the streaming uh, services on a Sunday morning. Keep that channel open in your life. Right now, it's so important for us to do that because many, many people right now are being weighed down by the circumstance they find themselves in. And you know what? We don't have to weigh ourselves down because God is on our side. He is for us. He will never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He's for us. And he's not against us. So today, I want to encourage you today to give your heart to Jesus today. Give him your heart. You know, you might be listening and you might be sitting there and heard this, but maybe your heart has never been turned to God. Maybe you've never received Jesus to come into your heart. I want to give you this moment right now just to give him your heart and he'll come into your life. And he will bring peace that you need. He will bring fulfillment in your life. 
right now pray this prayer with me right now this prayer of salvation just say this with me as we pray jesus i believe today that you are the son of god and that you gave your life for me on the cross of calvary i come to you today and i give you my heart give you my life come into my heart jesus thank you for saving me today right now i confess that jesus is lord and i believe i receive him now as my lord and my savior amen well if you prayed that prayer today then i want you to know that you are now born again that means you've come into the family of god and we're so excited that you've prayed that prayer and we would love to be a help to you so if you need help and you need to contact us you'll find a phone number coming up on the screen don't hesitate to call us to call me and i can respond to you any need you have tear prayer time or you need to have a discussion talk to me don't hesitate to call that number because we love you and appreciate you and i want you to know today that lol and i we are continually praying for you and your family our hearts are connected to you and we can't wait for the time where we can see each other face to face god bless you Remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world, and that you are the head and you're not the tail. You are above and not beneath, and whatever you put your hands to will prosper. Love you. We appreciate you. Amen.